Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week we had our third and final all hour of devastation against the odds poll, and in the end, it was fraying sanity that came out on top. So this week, we are heading to Modern to play a deck that people have been pretty hyped about since the release of fraying sanity, and that is Modern Mill. What does fraying sanity do to Modern Mill? That's what we're going to figure out this week. So a quick reminder before we break down fraying sanity for Modern: if you enjoy this deck and you enjoy against the odds in general, it would be amazing of you if you could take a quick second click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen it's a great way to support the channel and the site for free so let's talk frank sanity and frank sanity is pretty straightforward it's an enchantment slash curse so it enchants a player and it basically doubles up our mill is the simplest way to think about it it actually does more than that whenever a card goes in our opponent's graveyard from anywhere they mill that many cards at the end of turn. So they crack a fetch land, at the end of their turn, they're going to mill an additional card. A creature dies, they mill a card at the end of their turn. Uh, they get thought seized and discard something. They mill a card at the end of their turn. So you get this weird fringe milling from Frank Sanity, but the big deal is it doubles up the mill spells that we target our opponent with. So if we have something that mills 10, it mills 10, and then Frank Sanity mills 10 more. So it really boosts the power. It's like the Furnace of Wrath for mill decks, except it's only three mana. So it's a pretty powerful effect. So how are we milling our opponent to kill them with Frank Sanity? And we got to talk about Traumatize first. So when Frank Sanity was spoiled, people were pretty excited about Traumatize because it's kind of an instant win combo. If you mill half the deck with Traumatize, mill the other half with Frank Sanity, that's the whole thing. So people were really hyped about Traumatize, but I played a couple of test games with Traumatize, four of like the main focus trying to combo off with it, and I realized it's actually not very good. It's not that the combo isn't good, but Traumatize isn't a great mill card if we're not comboing, and when we have a Frank Sanity, I don't even think we really need Traumatize. It's so easy to mill someone out when we have a Frank Sanity that it's we don't even need a combo kill. So we still have one, so we can randomly combo someone off and get the insta-mill kill, but for the most part, we just want to use normal good mill spells to kill our opponent with Frank Sanity. So our good mill spells, the best Best one is Archive Trap, and this gives us a legitimate win the game on like turn three slash four nut draw. So we play Frank Sanity, we go to our opponent's turn, they crack a fetch. If we can Archive Trap twice, that's 26 cards milled. You double that up with Frank Sanity, that's 26 more. That's the entire deck on turn three. So that's like our nut draw. Involves double archive trap, Frank Sanity. We can also do some crazy stuff if we have double Frank Sanity archive trap. A little bit slower, but one archive trap with two Frank Sanities also just mills our opponent's entire deck out of the game. Plus, archive trap is just a really good mill spell. Lots of decks play fetches. Some decks are playing tutor effects, so there's lots of ways to cast it for zero mana. And mill 13, even without the doubling power of Frank Sanity, is really good. So archive trap is kind of our key card because of the trap cost of being able to cast it for free. We also have a bunch of other powerful mill spells. Glimpsy Unthinkable, mill 10 for 2, which doubles up to 20. If you think about it, by the time we're doing this on maybe turn 4 after Frank Sanity, if we can cast a couple Glimpsy Unthinkables, maybe our opponent cracks a fetch, or we have a little bit extra mill, we're going to mill our opponent's entire deck. And that's kind of the key thing I realized about this. We really need Frank Sanity, and then any two mill spells, and we should be able to win the game. That doesn't take much to mill people out when our milling is doubled. Mind Funeral, either the most insane mill spell in our deck, or the worst mill spell in our deck, it's a little bit high variance. So, our opponent reveals cards until they reveal four lands, and then they mill all those cards. So, sometimes it's unlucky, and we mill like eight, doubles up to 16. Other times we're lucky, and we mill like 20, doubles up to 40, and almost just kill our opponent with one Mind Funeral and Frank Sanity. And then Mesmeric Orb comes down early on turn two, which is really nice. It's on curve with Frank Sanity. So we can Mesmeric Orb turn two, Frank Sanity turn three, and then whenever anything untaps, 
the controller of the untapping permanent has to mill a card. So all your lands untap, you gotta mill. All your creatures untap, you gotta mill. So it's just this repeatable free milling that does double up with fraying sanity. Yes, it's milling us too, but we don't really care. It's kind of like a burn deck. You play a spell like Flame Rift that does four damage to each player. Well, sure, you're losing four life when you cast it, but your opponent's deck isn't built to take advantage of that. And our opponent's decks aren't gonna be built to take advantage of the fact that we're incidentally milling ourselves. However, our deck is built to take advantage of it, so even if we're milling slightly more of our own cards with Ms. Maricorp, it doesn't really matter because we have the Archive Traps and Glimpse the Unthinkables and Mind Funerals and all that stuff to push through even more milling. Our final mill card is kind of not really only sort of a mill card. That's Thought Scour. It does mill two, which is nice. In this deck, we almost always target our opponent with the milling of Thought Scour, but it's also just a cantrip. Helps us work through our deck a little bit, find more cards. So a one mana mill two that doesn't cost us a card, pretty good. So instead of playing something like Serum Visions in our deck, we're going with the Thought Scour plan. Then we have Crypt Incursion, which is super important to our deck. So one thing that you got to deal with playing a mill deck in Modern is having some sort of graveyard hate because there's certain things that just beat you. If you don't have any graveyard hate, your opponent has an Emrakul in your deck, it's pretty much just impossible to mill your opponent out because their graveyard keeps shuffling back in when the Emrakul gets milled. So in our deck, Crypt Incursion is our main deck graveyard hate spell. It's not the perfect answer to something like Emrakul. We're still usually going to lose to Emrakul in game one, but it is an answer to Emrakul. Plus, it gives us free wins against creature-based decks because it gains so much life. So say we're playing Bant Company or Affinity. We end up milling a bunch. Maybe we mill half of our opponent's decks. There's probably going to be 10, 15 creatures in the graveyard, which means for three mana, we're going to gain 30, 45 life, which is usually more than enough time to not die to a couple of attacks, find some more mill, make sure our fraying sanity's online, and finish off the game. Then we have a bunch of removal, and one of the sweet things about Frank Sanity is we don't need as many mill cards to win the game. So Frank Sanity, since it doubles all of our mill, means we don't have to play exclusively 100% mill cards and just hope we can play like a burn deck where every spell is going in our opponent's face. We only need a couple mill cards to win after we have Frank Sanity, so we can use those extra slots where we could play Tome Scour or Mind Sculpt or some of the lesser mill cards and use those for good cards that help us stay alive. So we have Fatal Pushes and Dismember for targeted removal in the early game, Damnation as a sweeper against aggro decks and go wide decks, any sort of creature decks. Then we also get Thought Seizes and Inquisitions to kind of pick apart our opponent's hand. Also, we get the weird mill one trigger with all this stuff. We Thought Seize a card. If we have Fraying Sanity out, a card went to the graveyard, so we mill another one. So it does all add up. And then one negate to deal with combo decks and so forth. As far as the mana base, bunch of fetches. We have some dual lands, some dark lake shores, some island swamps, and then Ghost Quarters, which are key in this deck for two reasons. First, yes, normally, like every other deck, they help us fight Tron and Creature Lands, but they also give us a way to force our opponent to shuffle their deck. So when we Ghost Quarter, they're going to want to search for another land. That turns on our Archive Traps if our opponent's not playing Fetch Lands or not fetching or something. So it's a way we can make our archive traps free most of the time because our opponent's gonna search. If they don't search, then we get a strip mine out of the deal. We can also get some random strip mine value in the late game where our opponent, most of their deck is milled. Maybe they don't have any basics left because modern decks don't play that many basics. Then Ghost Quarter is just a straight up strip mine that can keep our opponent off mana. As far as the sideboard, Big thing here is more graveyard hate. That's what we're really afraid of is emerkles and dredging and things coming back from the graveyard, lingering souls. So we get surgical extractions for targeted graveyard hate. Gets rid of all the emerkles forever. Probably going to lose to emerkle game one. Hopefully surgical makes it a good matchup in games two and three. Another crypt incursion for creature decks and aggro decks is much for the life gain as it is for the graveyard hate. Leyline of the Void is a bit weird. So it's kind of a non bow with Fraying Sanity because Fraying Sanity counts the cards that goes into the graveyard. Leyline of the Void is a replacement effect, so no cards go in the graveyard. But if we're playing against Dredge, if we're playing against Living End, another very heavily dependent on the graveyard type deck, then we don't really care. Like, we'll be fine with the non-bow because Leyline is just, I win the game on its own against those decks. So we're fine with our Frank Sanity not being great in those matchups if we happen to have a Leyline on turn zero just to win the game all by itself. And then we have Inquisitions in the game 
eight for more spell-based decks, a little bit more disruption for combo. We can go down our fatal pushes and stuff if we run into Storm and Ad Nauseum. Fulminator Mage, mostly for Tron. Damnation can come in over negate and so forth if we're playing creature heavy decks and then echoing true super important because leyline of sanctity is like game over against our deck we can't target with our mill spells we can't target with our fraying sanity so echoing true is a way we can bounce a leyline to make sure that we can still win the game if our opponent has leyline of sanctity and that's fraying sanity for modern and that's our against the odds deck for this week so how is this gonna work Ah, uh, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. We've played mill decks in the past, and the big update or change here is we have Frank Sanity. So how good is Frank Sanity? That's the question, and I think it's going to be pretty good. The fact that doubling all of our mind funerals and glimpsy unthinkables and archive traps means we need so many fewer mill spells to just win the game plus we have that nut draw that we just didn't have before where we can just randomly archive trap archive trap with a frame sanity out win the game that's all stuff that mill didn't have access to before so i feel like fraying sanity really bumps up the power of mill it doesn't solve the emerical problem so it's going to partly depend on the matchups or partly depend on us drawing the right sideboard cards in the emerical match Jobs. So we'll have to see what we run into, but I'm excited for it. I think we can get some wins with it. Anyway, that's Fraying Sanity for Modern, and that's our Against the Odds deck for this week. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay videos, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you haven't already, take a minute and click that subscribe button. It's a great way to support the channel for free, and you'll find the next video in the playlist right here.